So the Rings of Power, obviously very, very justifiable criticism started from the off. When we started to hear that there were casting changes, Tolkien scholars being fired, left, etc. Subsequently, the show has come out to pretty fair and justified criticism over it being genuinely a boring show. We are now reaching the end of season one. Nothing has happened and people are justifiably critiquing the show. Now... As with all these things, Amazon hasn't enjoyed that, and they have run tail between legs, essentially uh, hiding anything negative, and now lambasting the critics. Uh, but not actual critics, but just anyone. Anyone that doesn't like it. Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power showrunner, accuses show's critics of being patently evil. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's not going to make people watch it. It's not good. Bizarre. Really bizarre. And this goes hand in hand with everything else that they've been doing. Uh, not, not just the showrunners, but Amazon in general. Uh, blocking any negative review. Not a good look. Not a good look. Uh, paying for puff pieces non-stop. There was all the Entertainment Weekly puff pieces that they paid for, and then Entertainment Weekly's review comes out. It's like, yeah, it's garbage. It just, it's a terrible look, and this is even worse. But an all too common tactic among uh, sort of studios and streamers now, just to lambast the audience. So, Prime Video, uh, and, you know, out of, of Amazon Studios, and the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power showrunners participate in one of the most obvious damage control pieces in history of media by doubling down on their offensive and vile rhetoric by calling critics of the show patently evil. That's right. Don't agree with us. You're evil. What utter nonsense. So instead of working with Vanity Fair as they did in February, when they initially attacked Tolkien fans, this time Prime Video and Amazon worked with The Hollywood Reporter. And make no mistake, this is them working with them, paying for it, getting a puff piece, uh, exchange of goods, whatever it is, this is paid PR. If you remember in February, Prime Video's hatchet men uh, of Anthony Bresnikan and Joanna Robinson derided Tolkien fans, describing them as trolls. The two wrote, When Amazon released photos of its multicultural cast, even without character names or plot details, the studio endured a reflexive attack from trolls, the anonymous online kind. No, it didn't. It featured very fair and justifiable criticism that you are changing the core concept and the core inception point of why this thing even existed. Very fair and justifiable. Uh, oh, in, in t if most people's criticism now comes from it being boring and dull. So how are you going to top that one up to being patently evil? Really? And most people really enjoyed Deesa, the Black Dwarf. They thought that she was really good. I thought she was really good. doesn't change the fact that it's nonsense. You know, like, you are fundamentally changing things, not for the better. Where's the beard? That's kind of important. You know, that's just nonsense. But anyway, uh, the two then cited the Equality and Diversity Officer for the University of Glasgow Centres for Fantasy and Fantastic, uh, Mariana Rios Maldano, uh, Mol Moldonado uh, is a radical political activist who is interested in ethics, feminist theory, and encountering the other in Tolkien. Uh, but Vanity Fair paints her as a Tolkien scholar to attack fans, which is not the case. It's not what she is. She's just an activist. So obviously there were going to be pushback and backlash. But the question is from whom? Who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? I mean, literally just... Just people that know the works. They don't feel threatened. It's a justifiable criticism to go, why are you changing it? Can you tell us why? You know, like, why? But it's... The funny thing is, is Amazon that feels threatened by people's questioning of things. Hence why they keep attacking people. So since then, Prime Video has deployed numerous media tactics to attack Tolkien fans. They use Elijah Wood, Sean Astin, Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd uh, as props to denounce fans criticising the show. This was the most just, uh, yeah, this was nonsense. I couldn't believe this. Absolute nonsense. Um, yeah. 
Although I don't think Sean Astin... What happened from... Oh, Sean Astin did say something, yeah. I didn't realise they couldn't get him in that picture. But yeah, he was... I think it, everyone thought that he wasn't involved, but no, apparently he was. Um, and then we get this whole, oh, you're all welcome here, and they literally wheel black people out and hide behind the criticism of it. Uh, that's what Amazon did. They were wheeling out the cast members to basically go, oh, it's all racism, rather than... Well, no, it wasn't. That is boring. Um, but we've got more. We've got more. So let's get to the point. This is just the backstory of it all. Um, but we've got more. Of course. So showrunner J.D. Payne has taken the attacks on fans to the next level. In his article from The Hollywood Reporter, T Payne tells them, The spirit of Tolkien is about disparate people who don't trust one another and look different from one another, finding common ground in friendship and accomplishing big things. That's the spirit we've tried to uh, in inculcate into every single comma and period in the show. That this aspiration would be offensive to people and enrage them. It's very hard to, for us to understand. What are they protecting? I don't see how people who are saying these things think that they're fighting for good. There's a line in episode 7 where Galadriel says every war is fought from without and within. Even if you're fighting for something you think is good, if you do something worse in that fight then you become evil. I don't see how people who are saying these things think that they're fighting for good. It's patently evil. What are you smoking? So, a few things to consider here. Very, very little criticism upon release of the show has been around that. Most criticism has near universally been that it's boring, it's dull, and the writing is bad. The overtly thespian language doesn't it doesn't work. Uh, it's try hard. The acting's bad. The uh, action itself is bad. I mean, Galadriel flopping off the side of a horse and you know to dodge an arrow and chop an orc's head off that was lame. How did um, How Brand randomly appear in front of Adar and Galadriel? That doesn't make any sense. The whole point of the show was to get a sword, which is actually a key to a dam, which then unlocks the dam you could have just used a catapult you dipshits this whole thing what has been a massive waste of time and money for everyone involved viewers creators everything there you go nothing about race how are you going to top that one up to being evil how what because the sword's black now blm i guess so anyway first off Payne's assertion is a patent lie um, that he sugarcoats with his own fake platitudes in order to justify the horrific product he has created. One only needs to look at how the first episode ends and Galadriel's rejection of the equivalent of heaven to realise the evil that lies underneath the Lord of the Rings of Rings of Power. And not only does she reject heaven, but a memory from her now dead brother telling her we cannot know which lights to follow until we have touched the darkness implies the heaven she rejects is actually evil, it's repulsive. I mean, that's true, that's some... Uh, deeper looking into it. It's just nonsense. Now, Payne's own director also admits the show does not embrace this idea of friendship. Wayne Chi Yip detailed that a scene in episode 5, uh, Parting, specifically tried to show that Galadriel was entrapping and manipulating Halbrand to do her bidding, which uh, that is the case. Uh, what Aaron, my cinematographer, and I wanted to do was create this sense of entrapment. The scene starts with Galadriel finding Halbrand at the end of a day in the blacksmiths and she feels she has the upper hand because of the information that she's found out about the mark that Halbrand wears around his neck. Yeah, it's not exactly good, is it? Oh, it's just... It's stop attacking fans. Stop it. Genuinely. I mean, obviously they're not going to listen. They don't care. But yeah, changing things needlessly. It's a worthy topic to discuss. Um, but calling people evil for pointing it out, no. Not particularly smart. And I bet you anything, the Tolkien scholar that left this, I bet you anything, he wasn't fired. I think he just, I bet you he just left. Or he was fired because he pointed out how ridiculous this show is. Um, but anyway, we've got two more episodes left. Got one more episode tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So we'll kind of see, see how it is. Uh, but there you go. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, making no friends.